In three, two, one, you are listening to The Real Spicy Podcast with your host, Gil Pedro. Yo, I think this is the first time uh, because of COVID that we had to go uh, remote. You know what? Before we start, I come to realize that I'm a giant. Um, we got we got to raise this up a little bit. But uh, this is the, the first guest in studio. Um, because of COVID, I had to go remote. And before I even hit him up, I'm like, all right. Who do I want in my house? You know, who do I want in the <laughs> studio? Who do I trust? You know, right now, because of social distancing, there are some people, and I think that you can agree, that they feel invincible, um, mostly because yeah. they're pretty young. You know, they, yeah. it's, uh, you know, you are, you and I are, 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 are in our either late 20s or early 30s, and um, we feel invincible. But at the end of the day, you can't really trust on that. Yeah. Um, I was like, so who am I going to bring? Who am I going to bring? So I started stalking people on social media. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, Thanks. well, they were just with friends. Nope. Uh, this guy is creepy. That's why he's a loner. Nope. And I'm like, Jerry, he, ha- he, he, he has a ton of friends, but he hasn't been hanging out because he's following social distancing. Yeah. So I kind of interviewed him. I gave him a call. I was like, hey, bro, have you been following social distancing? And he's like, what do you mean? And I kind of interviewed him. And he's like, so what are you trying to say? What I'm trying to say is, can you come into the podcast in person? Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Yeah, I'm down. I'm down. Yeah. So uh, I'm so excited. Uh, for the first time in the studio, I got a guest, a very good the friend of mine. One. The first one, man. First one. Very good friend of mine. i uh, known him since, uh, since the college days. Uh, we started uh, probably in the, in the entertainment uh, at around the same time. Um, mostly as a hobby, not as a career or yeah. uh, out, out of passion, you know? Yeah. Um, but, uh, bro, introduce yourself, man. What's good? How are you? I'm doing really good. First of all, as soon as I saw your, your call, I already knew what, what it was for. And I was uh-huh. like, oh man, yeah, I'm going to be invited on the guest, on the pat- podcast as a, as a guest. Uh-huh. I didn't know that I'd be the first one in the studio. Oh, okay. So I feel very honored to be the inaugural guest in studio. So thank you so much. Uh, my name is Gerardo Hernandez. All my friends know me as Jerry. Um, and like Gil said, Gil, you were the one to really introduce me to YouTube. Uh-huh. And that's when I started my page in 2010. And I did it as a hobby because I could not blow up to save my life. So now I just do it as a hobby. I do yeah. it because it's a passion and there's no ulterior motive. Yeah. I just simply want to create and put put product out there. If somebody watches it, great. If nobody does it, I still get the fulfillment of putting it out there and, and expressing myself. Through, oh, ab- absolutely. That. Absolutely. No, totally agree with that. Uh, oh, hold on. Oh, I kind of got scared. I was like, oh, <laughs> we're not recording. We're not recording. I uh, do it because at the end of the day, you know, um, you you even though you're like, I got a fail proof plan. Let's be honest. Something is always going to go wrong, yeah. uh, especially it, in the beginning. Oh, especially in the beginning. You know, this is my third episode of the first one. If it was the first, you know, that was the first remote one because I planned this since January. And I was like, I, I'm excited to have people in, in, in my house. You know, I'm like, oh, wait. some people might not want to come all the way where I live or or it's like, oh, that's kind of weird going to this house. But like, I really try to legitimize it. Not only are you coming to, to my house, but also you're coming to an actual low budget studio, you yeah. know, but at the same time, um, but try to make of, it. First of all, mad props for this because you know, podcasting can be very easy uh-huh. or it can be very difficult. And it looks like you put a lot of thought and process into this Yeah. to the point where I walked in here and I thought I w- this was a legit studio. It's small. Uh-huh. It's in your home. But this is all you need. And a lot of people that are watching or listening to this, this is not an easy thing to put out. So yeah. the fact that you started this in January and you manifested it all the way into almost like springtime. Yeah. And you have this entire setup is very, very impressive. And then the other thing is mad props because COVID might have been a blessing in disguise because even though you had to do your first interview uh, remote through Zoom or whatever video Mm -hmm. chat you want to do, this gives you an avenue where you can get people from around the country to come on your podcast in case they find it and they're like, oh, this is something I'm interested in and you can start networking that way. Oh, absolutely. So if anything, it's great practice to do um, video calling. Uh, but if you can obviously get a guest in studio, that's always going to give it a different energy. Yeah. In my opinion. Yeah. No, dude. It's, it, uh, yeah. I remember the first one. I'm like, oh, I have no idea what I'm doing. And I, and I did it through zoom and, and, uh, that, that interview went well. Um, the, the video on my end shut 
on me three times and I'm freaking out. I was like, what the hell am I doing? I try to make this as, uh, um, you know, foolproof as possible. But it was one little setting on the camera mm. that shuts off after 30 minutes. I mean, you got to be kidding me. I made sure that everything was off and everything that I needed to be on was on. And uh, the second one, the second one, the video it, that came out with it, yeah. I thought, in my opinion, was better. I only the camera only shut on me once, mm -hmm. and that was because I I did something different that I wasn't supposed to do. But the one thing I messed up was the audio. And if you're gonna have a podcast, it's all about the it's audio. All about the audio. <laughs> all about the audio. I'm like I focus so much on the video that I put very little care into the audio. But you know, this is the first time that I'm doing this in studio. I think I prepared myself for an in studio podcast. Uh, so hopefully everything goes right today, but dude, you know, so what's good with you, man? I know, I know the obvious one, you know, just at home being quarantined, but what, you got any projects that you've been working on right now? Well, I'm kind of starting to take my photography a different direction for mm -hmm. or from what I know, from what I normally shoot. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's just very simple. Um, giving it more of a medium format film look, uh, and TikTok. I've gotten on the TikTok train mm -hmm. and I really like it because it's so easy to create a 10 second, 15 second, 30 second, maybe a minute project, put yeah. it out and it's out as opposed to where I tried doing YouTube. Yeah. I'd make a video. It goes 16 minutes. I know nobody's going to watch it, but yeah. I still put it out because I worked hard on it. Yeah. But with TikTok, it's a little bit different. I feel like all other social media platforms are kind of not dying, but yeah. uh, the attention is driven away from them because I feel everybody's on TikTok. Absolutely. You the young people. Uh, the people our age are on it, and now even the parents uh, and older people are like, "What's this TikTok?" And they're all jumping on it. And COVID really helped it because yes. uh, I I jumped on there, and it seems like everybody's there. It feels like it's more of a community, and everybody's creating, and that's the atmosphere I want to be in. Yeah, and I don't really see that in Facebook. I don't see that on Twitter. I don't see that on Instagram. Kind of don't see it on YouTube right now. No. So I just kind of been on TikTok and I've just been creating. And that's yeah. what I've been doing. I've been actually very busy during COVID, even though I'm not going anywhere. Yeah. I'm working on a little bit of photography, a little bit of video editing, little projects I've always wanted to do, mm -hmm. and also TikTok. So okay. That, that's basically all I've been doing. Cool, cool. Uh, dang. You know, I think the, the one thing that people forget or probably haven't even noticed if you are, and I heard this from somebody else, so I started looking into it, but TikTok, it's such a great platform for people to, one, uh, gain exposure, mm -hmm. but also I believe that it has a demographic for every single person yeah. if you utilize it well. Yes. The reason why I say that, TikTok right now, and, I, and, and it's not because I'm a dancer, but I do know a couple people in the dancing industry. Yeah. If you're not on TikTok and you're a dancer, what the hell are you doing? TikTok is one of those that you can it, you can put copyrighted music, yeah. dance, and you won't get in trouble. Yes. Why aren't dancers who are legitimate dancers or trying to break through into the dance industry not posting on TikTok? I get it right now. The most popular thing is like twerking videos, mm -hmm. which uh, which I get that. But as a professional, if you are if you're a dancer, you should be on TikTok, not Instagram. Instagram has become the influencer one. Yeah. At the end of the day, it's a flex. Whatever you do, you post it on Instagram to flex. I mean, look at Bow Wow. I mean, he would get in front of like a car or a plane, yes. take a photo. I was just thinking about that yeah. the other day. And <laughs> he would claim it as his own. And bruh, <laughs> he got caught, you know. Because <laughs> You can't I'm sorry. lie in this 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 uh, in this age because every everybody has eyes on you, especially if you're Bow Wow. Even though he's not, you know, popping right now, he's yeah. not, he's not big. People still know who he is. Oh yeah, and he got exposed. Oh, absolutely. Because I mean, he went on on a he went on a like on a charter. Pl no, no, he just went on a commercial flight. Yeah. He like minute like an hour before he said, "I'm going on my private jet," and he got caught. In yeah. the same outfit, same everything. I thought that was hilarious. But even because of that, I mean, a meme became out of it. It was, uh, what was it? The Bow Wow Challenge. I you, think so. Oh, yeah. 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 Where, where you flex, <laughs> but then you show the reality or yeah. something like that. Yeah. yeah I mean, uh, that, so, but I think that each platform has its own audience and, and what you're looking for. Um, you know, Instagram is social influencers without yeah. a doubt. You, if you're a social influencer, if you're a model, if you have something to give to the world, uh, celebrities, get on Instagram. I mean, that that is, if you're someone 
who plans on getting sponsorships, Instagram is the way to go. Yeah. Uh, I believe that if you're looking for a creative avenue, so if you do music, if you do cooking, because I've seen a couple like one minute cooking videos. There's some good ones. And they're blowing up. Yeah. On TikTok. If you're a dancer, not just like the twerking dancer, but like a legitimate like trained yeah. dancer, or even if you're not trained, but you know what you're doing, get your ass on TikTok at the end of yeah. the day. And then Twitter. Twitter is one of those that's kind of interesting. It's not really yeah. for a specific demographic. I know the uh, about a month ago, uh, there were some, some issues with politicians going on there and having promoted ads. But it's really not for that. At the end of the day, I think it's just a, a platform for expression, whether that be yeah. any any sort of expression, anger, sadness, depression, uh, even sarcasm. Uh, yeah. I mean, but also that it gets dark, too. I mean, very dark humor um, and even even darker, you know, it kind of gets mm-hmm. uh, offensive and racist. But that's your platform to post that. Uh, so it's good that you're, you know, yeah, that you're doing TikTok. Yeah, uh, just having fun with it. That's the most important thing. Do you have something in specific that you're doing on TikTok? No, I'm just I'm just scrolling through TikTok, mm-hmm. uh, following accounts that I, I find funny or useful, like the cooking ones. Mm-hmm. I've seen a couple of fitness ones, um, a couple that are comedy based and whatever inspires me mm-hmm. the next day. That's what I'm doing. That's the project I'm going to work on. Uh, one of the biggest things I like about TikTok is that it, it makes you create. You you can be on there and just look at everybody, but at some point you're going to get this little spark mm-hmm. where it's like, I want to join in. Yeah. I don't see that spark in other social media platforms. The thing you were saying about creators, uh, whether they have a niche or not, mm-hmm. is that other platforms are very different. The landscape of social media, Facebook you have for your family, right? Absolutely. A bunch of memes and videos, a lot of negativity, I would say. Yeah. Twitter, like you said, it's very interesting because it's a combination of everything. Yeah. And to be honest, a lot of the times I don't even, I've had the app and I could go a year without touching it. Mm-hmm. Um, Instagram, like you said, it's more for influencers. Uh, it's kind of becoming more like Facebook where you have a bunch of memes and videos yeah. and your family's starting to get on. It seems that everybody has accepted it as the new Facebook and that's where they congregate. Yeah. TikTok is the new kid in the, on the block and you have a lot of haters that says, oh, that's for like little kids. It's the new Vine. It's the new Vine. And yeah. I don't want to touch it. Like there's this stigma about TikTok that people mm-hmm. don't like and I don't understand it. Um, so for me, I was like, I've had TikTok for a year. I posted one back in August and I never touched it again until the whole COVID kind of made it blow up. And I was yeah. like, let me check it out again. And I just liked it. And I, I follow a bunch of people that are funny, a bunch of people that give me like cooking lessons. And I've done a couple recipes already and it's yeah. very useful. There's a lot on TikTok that is very useful. DIY projects, cooking, fitness, uh, just go in there for a laugh, and I really like it. So, for me, the the issue with me with YouTube, with mm-hmm. Instagram, I never have had a niche because I don't want to just claim one thing. Yeah. To be honest, I say I want to blow up and be this big influencer, but the reality is I don't want to be famous. Yeah. I, I just I I don't I would handle it appropriately, but to be honest, I don't think I want all eyes on me. I just want to have the the fun of creating things and feeling like I'm a part of it without actually getting all eyes on me and getting all the hate and all that yeah. stuff because I just don't want to deal with that. So with TikTok, I'm doing the same thing. I'm just doing whatever I want. That's what I do it. Uh, if anybody wants uh, help or questions about how I make some videos, mm-hmm. I'll, I'll help them out. I'll tell them. Right now, the biggest thing I've been doing that people really uh, have fun with is I'm doing like a little reality TV skit, uh-huh. like one minute reality TV skits where it's like super dramatic, like a spinoff on like the Kardashians or Total Divas or whatever other reality shows are yeah. on there. And it's just more of a satire. Okay. Uh, so I have the, the sound effects. I uh-huh. have the fake altercations. And me and my, the best part of those is filming them. Yeah. That's always been the fa- my favorite thing. Anytime I buy a movie, I go to the bloopers because I could see the actors breaking, laughing, and, and just having fun with it. And that whole process of creating is what's fun. It's not the final product. Mm-hmm. It's creating it and coming together with someone and sharing that bond of like we're working towards a goal. And uh, yeah, when I when we look back on the film and stuff, we, we laugh with uh, me and my roommate Melissa, and and we're just having fun doing it. And we actually get more uh, people uh, from when she posted on her Instagram. So I don't care who's watching it on one yeah. platform, as long as people watch it and enjoy it. That's all I care about. Okay, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's kind of like what you said. It goes back to 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 the passion of it, mm-hmm. definitely. No, that dude, that's badass. You know, you said you mentioned something about fitness uh, and cooking. I saw one recipe on there um, about uh, 
about bananas and it was like how to how to use like over ripened bananas don't throw them away they're still good i think i saw that one yeah so i and there's a few of them there's banana bread and then there's like these oatmeal banana um oatmeal banana cookies my roommate did those yesterday oh really yeah they were good okay (laughs) yeah and some of them are easy and i chose the and some of them are a little bit more complicated i chose like three ingredient oatmeal banana cookies Mm -hmm. and it was just bananas oatmeal and 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 they put chocolate chips oh chocolate chips yeah and that was it no no nothing okay um so i'm like okay um I don't really like chocolate that much, Mm -hmm. but I have coconut shreds. So what I did, yeah. So what I did is I had uh, uh, a whole cup of old fashioned oatmeal. I'm like, okay, this is a, I should have had instant oatmeal because it kind of, the other one is just too thick. Yeah. So what I did is I put in the blender and I made that into a flour and I put that into bananas. (laughs) Uh, Yeah. (laughs) And I put that, I put a ton of bananas. I put them in. I'm like, oh, these are, these are really good. No, no extra sugar, no mm-hmm. nothing. And I started realizing this is all carbs, which it's healthy carbs, which means if you know a little bit about, you know, the, the nutrition world and the fitness world, yeah. carbs is a natural form, especially those like that. This is a natural energy bar. It's not a protein bar. It's an energy bar because I took it and one, I was super full yeah. Two. I'm like, okay, probably I should do something with my life instead of just like laying here and yeah. eating these delicious cookies that I just baked, um, which kind of gets me into the whole fitness thing. I see that you're doing a ton of fitness thing, and at one point, uh, you were you you were like in tip top shape. I think you were bulking up by, or or leaning out, but you were doing some something when hardcore. <laughs> I would say like about a year ago. Um, yeah. I think you were training for something. I think it was just your personal goal. Um, but I mentioned that just because, you know, you and I have very different, different, um, I guess, fitness stories. You know, obviously mm-hmm. mine is more of the, of like going from super, super fat to less fat. Um, and then right now, you know, my goal is just being strong. Mm-hmm. I don't, I don't care if I'm big. I don't care if I'm small. I just care about being strong. You know, if, if, you know, I drop something that's a hundred pounds, I can pick it up like nothing. If I need to move a car, I can just pick it up with one hand and get it out of the mm-hmm. way. You know, like that's the goal. Okay. All right. <laughs> so I just want to be strong. Um, that's why I do a lot of powerlifting and and but also I forget that even though you, I want to be strong, I also need to be healthy. Yeah. I, I hate cardio, dude. I hate cardio. And in order to no, be healthy no, and nobody strong, nobody likes it. Nobody dude, likes it. No, I don't think I've ever heard one person. Oh, I love running twenty six miles every morning. What the hell is wrong with you? <laughs> but at the end of the day, too, I mean, cardio is such a important aspect of of overall fitness and yeah that's something that i forget thing i like about cardio is that mm-hmm. you know it's easy because you can go outside and just run yeah and to be honest i'm glad i have a platform to say this people that go to the gym to run on a uh on a treadmill annoy me really so you do it i'm sorry yeah but like you can go outside and do it for free you get fresh air yeah Uh, it's harder to run with your own legs on the actual pavement or grass or track, whatever it is, as opposed to going to another building, being inside and running in place for, I don't know how long you want. If you want to watch the TV, that's fine. If you want to read your book while you're walking or kind of jogging on it, that's fine. But there's so many, to me, it's so freeing to have a runner's high when you're outside and you're running. And I also don't like to run all the time, but Mm -hmm. when I get that runner's high, it's one of the best feelings in the world. I think three times I've ran, 16 miles at once yeah and after it you just feel like invincible you feel like a warrior but yeah you know every single day wanting to do it yeah that's not me but i i do love the once i once it's done and that's everything with life whatever challenges you have you always kind of like lag to do it and you take your time and you put it off but once you just go and you do it once it's over with you feel so accomplished so yeah um, I, I do encourage people to do cardio. Um, I know a lot of people that are in the fitness world sometimes don't because they're trying to bulk up and they don't want to get too lean mm-hmm. and, and they, they're following a certain regimen. But my thing with fitness is it's always been up and down. Yeah. I'm always either uh, tip top shape or I've let myself go. And uh, the last time I really let myself go was in 2018. Mm-hmm. And then I went through a breakup. And then after the breakup, um, I just, I was just kind of doing some self-evaluation and yeah. I was like, I don't like where I'm at right now in life. And I think one of the reasons was because I wasn't 
uh, actively doing fitness. Yeah. Anytime I don't do fitness, I'm miserable. I don't know what it is. So anytime I am doing fitness or I'm eating right or I'm watching what I'm uh, – sometimes I don't eat right. I'm, I love Chick-fil-A. I love Raising yeah. Cane's. I, I might go there every day if somebody doesn't stop me. But um, once I'm actually doing uh, actual workouts and I'm running and I'm you know seeing results – I'm so much more happier. Yeah. Um, and I know with your story, you, I'm so proud of you because you've lost so much weight. Mm-hmm. Um, you probably expanded your lifespan. And for me, you know, I, I didn't start all the way where you did, but I have my ups and downs just like yeah. every other human being. Because I remember you posted uh, or you shared some like before photos because I think you used to play football, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think you were. No, there was a time you posted something about being a little bit bigger yeah. and then you, like, you leaned out. Oh yeah, that, I, I think I know what post you're talking about. I, yeah. I, there was a, it was a trip to Santa Monica Beach with my 12th grade class yeah. in high school. I just blew up. Mm-hmm. Uh, freshman year, I was supposed to wrestle like 160s, 171s. By senior year, I was wrestling 215s, and because I was so big, I didn't win a single match. Were if you tired? I, I, I was just too big. I, I'm not supposed to be a big guy. I'm supposed yeah. to be a really skinny, thin guy. And yeah. I was wrestling with these bigger guys, and I just stamina wise i could keep up with them but at some point they were overpower me i was yeah. just too small uh, i was just fat yeah uh after high school what i did was i stopped drinking soda i stopped uh eating really late at night and i would work out every day i would either run for 30 minutes mm-hmm. and then the other day i would do 100 push-ups 100 sit-ups uh 100 squats 100 jumpy jacks and then the next day I would run and then just continue alternating. Yeah. And I just lost so much weight. Um, maybe six months after high school, I dropped down to like 149 after going to like around one, two, 210. Yeah. And that's what it was. And then I, then again, I kind of gained a little bit of weight. And then mm-hmm. I think the after picture I posted on my Instagram, which I think is what you saw, mm-hmm. it was when I was starting to go to an actual gym. I was old enough to drive myself to a gym, yeah. own a gym membership, and I started going to Gold's Gym. And that's when I started to lift. So I was doing lifting, uh-huh. gaining muscle, and still doing some cardio. And just seeing the before and after pictures, I was like, I have to post this. Oh, absolutely. And I never wanted to be like a fitness um, guru or a fitness like insp- inspo, but um, I just wanted to show people that like you can go from something and be something completely different if you just put your mind and put the time into it. Oh, absolutely. So. Yeah. I think everyone has a, a super unique story because every single body and I, and I always emphasize this, every single body is unique in its own way. Yeah. Um, you know, some people always talk about, you know, trying to lose weight. So they ask me, mm-hmm yo, you're not going to lose weight how I lost weight. I mean, the first 100 pounds that I lost weight, I was eating like a power lifter. I was eating, um, what, six chicken breasts a day, half a dozen of eggs, two, Dang. like almost a box of spinach just because I was so easy to eat. Yeah. Um, or just like, I forgot how many pounds of broccoli, but it was just easier to eat just the same thing every day. That's crazy. And I lost a lot of weight. But also when you're 500 pounds, you got to maintain a certain amount of food, but just obviously the healthy foods. Yeah. I was bored. I was like, I hate chicken. Like I, I want, <laughs> but it was because it was just like either grills or, or boiled. And I'm like, man, I want some fried chicken. You know, like yeah. I just want some good old, I like Popeye's. I just want some good old, uh, good old <laughs> spicy fried chicken from Popeye's. But no, you know, like I, I followed that and I, and I did lose weight, but you know, you, 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 not only are you into the fitness world a little bit, you know, on your own, but you incorporated your passion for photography into fitness. Yeah. Uh, not too long ago, I, d- I did see that you 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 did a a a fitness inspired photo shoot. Um, can you tell us a little bit about that? I think I've done two. Um, one of the things I like doing is I like blending all my different um, worlds into one. Mm-hmm. Just uh, And I think I did uh, last year around January. I tried doing one with my friend uh, Mariella, and it was just really cold. Mm-hmm. Uh, and she's into CrossFit. Didn't work out. And then in August, I did one with my roommate Melissa. Mm-hmm. And we weren't living together at the time, but she put on Instagram, any photographers that would like to do a shoot? And it's like, I'm a photographer. I, yeah. I could do it for you. And so we met up and she's awesome. She's like the best model ever. Uh, she knew what poses she wanted. She was really easy to work with. And all we did was just kind of show off a little bit about 
her, her body, yeah. right? Because uh, to me, she could easily be this like uh, fitness, uh, you know, influencer on Instagram. Yeah. But she's an actual fitness coach, so she's focusing on her career. So all I okay. wanted to do was just kind of show a little bit of my skills as mm -hmm. how I can create uh, photographs in a completely different field as opposed to like, um, you know, models and portraits or graduation photos or yeah. like cute little Instagram Pinterest photos. I wanted to do something on the athletic side. Okay. I always like to expand my my um my expertise, if you will. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the toughest shoots I ever did was a car shoot with a with a girl model, and I was like, how am I going to do this? So I was looking at like a bunch of pictures, and that's what I like. I just like finding a different type of shoot that I've never done before mm -hmm. and attacking it with whatever knowledge I have and creating something out of it and surprising myself. Yeah. That's the biggest thing for me is if I can surprise myself with how good pictures can come out, that's the experience I'll take to improve towards like the next one. And I'm still looking to do another uh, athletic shoot uh, with whoever might want to hit me up mm -hmm. uh, or with her. But for right now with COVID, I, all my photography stuff is on the side for me. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you did a, a, was it like an import model type of shoot where it's like a fancy car and they're like in the bikini? Uh, not a bikini. It was just like a cute little like little red dress, little risque. Uh -huh. um, and then uh, the, the car was her, her boyfriend's car. And yeah. it's a friend that I've known for a long time. And uh, I was nervous going into it because uh, I've never done that. I didn't know how to pose her. I didn't know what lighting it was. I didn't even know what location it was because she picked it out. Uh, it was like a back alley down in downtown with a bunch of graffiti on there. Yeah. So once I got to the location, immediately my brain was thinking colors, backdrops, uh, where, the, where the lighting lighting is going how do yeah. i want the car parked and you have to go into this mode where it's like you better come up with something fast because we're gonna start shooting and i'm losing sunlight yeah it was like at 6 p.m like during the summer so i had like at least an hour before like actual yeah. like blue hour which is where the sun's completely gone yeah because golden hour is five or six right yeah right right sunset so yeah. that just as it's descending that's that gold warm light that you get mm -hmm. and then blue hour a lot of a lot of times people leave after golden hour but then you get blue hour which is this nice cool um blue light that you get which you can actually create some awesome shots but yeah. some people just take off after that and that's a, actually a good time to also shoot and i learned all this stuff from youtube a lot of people it's like wow did you go to uh school it's like no you, well yeah technically yeah. youtube university yes uh, and if you <laughs> love something it doesn't matter if you go to school or not you're gonna pick it up you're gonna learn it if you're that passionate about something you will learn. Oh uh, yeah, I agree a hundred percent. I mean, and and that that goes in, into like this this project that I that I came about. Um, I had to look it up how to create a a better audio, uh, have a more legitimate feel to it. Yeah. Uh, and I'm like, okay, so how am I gonna do this? I know I have a mic. And it was one of those plug and play mics that goes into your computer. Mm -hmm. And I've seen a couple people use use those for their podcasts, but it has like a it the content may be good may be good, but it yeah. just doesn't sound good. And and I'm like, all right, I might need to to upgrade. So I started looking around and I used to be part of a radio show when I yeah. was at, was when I was in school. And then even after that I had my own radio show. And so I looked up those mics. I'm like, okay. Uh, I don't have 400 bucks and I looked up all these YouTubers, all these podcasts and they all yeah. use that mic. So I'm like, okay, 400 bucks. It's a little too much for a startup that for right now yeah. in the future is when you start upgrading. So I started doing some research and I had a lot of reviews and then I found, uh, the mics that we're using now. And it turns out that they almost use the exact same driver as that $400, uh, lens four hundred dollar mic yeah um and they're about a fourth of the of the price and i'm like oh my god and you know I, I did i did a lot of like um this mic versus that mic and i'm listening to it and i'm like okay okay Yo, they almost sound alike i mean there's like fine pitching noises that yeah. come out of that perfect mic and that slowly but surely how did i find the information asking questions in youtube um, when you got into photography, were you one of those that, that you would ask questions that with those in the industry or was it just about YouTube? It was all YouTube. I didn't know anybody else that was trying to be a photographer. Yeah. Um, and I want to touch on a point that you mentioned about comparing like a $400 microphone to what we're using right now. Mm -hmm. Audio is very difficult because you can edit uh, audio in a software and it can match up with something more expensive. But the thing is, when you're talking about equipment, 
Uh, number one, what I learned from the great Casey Neistat is that mm -hmm. equipment doesn't matter. All that matters is the person using it and the content, the story. Yeah. So as long as you have great guests, uh, you you have a schedule of having where you can produce content on a weekly basis or a monthly basis or whatever you're mm -hmm. going to do. Have a schedule and keep it. Yeah. Yeah. And then put out the content. People will listen no matter if you, you're using a $100 mic, a $500 mic, or a $1,000 mic. All yeah. that matters is the content and how you use it to deliver that content. Now, one of the things with photography, I always, uh, the way I started with my cameras, I bought a point and shoot Canon power shot. Mm -hmm. I can't remember how much it was. It must have been like maybe 200 bucks. Yeah. Just a dumb little silver metallic like yeah. box back what everybody used around 2005, or whatever. Yeah, the point and shoot. Yeah, and I used that. Pictures came out great because mm -hmm. um, other kids were using their cell phones, so my pictures were always great. The video on there was horrible. Uh, I would never edit pictures. I would just upload them on MySpace and then eventually Facebook. Then what happened was um, I got a what's called a Canon Rebel 5000, which is a T1i. Yeah. Right now, a lot of people have a T3 or a T6. Yeah. Uh, and that camera was great because it was my first professional camera. And then what I said, I need to upgrade. So then I went and got... T5i right here. Is that it? Let me it's, see. It's a T5i. Yeah. It's my, my, other, my very first one is exactly the same except yeah. it doesn't have the pop-out screen. Yeah. So, yeah, you can do a lot with it. You can, oh, you can shoot a wedding. Yep graduation pictures any anything you could do anything with it what what matters is how you use it it doesn't matter what mm -hmm. camera it is it doesn't matter what the equipment is as long as you know how to use it and get the most out of it you're gonna get some great pictures because i upgraded to a 7d not a 70d uh -huh. a 7d yeah um and it was a great camera that's what really pushed me to shoot in raw had more iso mm -hmm. um higher aperture priority i started looking at lenses all this you know technical stuff that some people might not want to follow but yeah then i got a canon 5d mark iii which is this one yeah and then i have a sigma 35 millimeter lens yeah on here all this together goes close to about four thousand bucks yeah i could probably get the same amount same types of images on your camera as this one mm -hmm. the only difference is this has a couple of extra settings that will make me feel comfortable being on the field yeah shooting like a wedding for yeah. example and i believe that it's the the higher you go up, obviously in price and quality, yeah. um, it also it's more rugged. From what I've been told, the, yeah. the, when you said the T five I, so for those that are listening, when he said the the T the T one I, I'm like, oh crap, I have one of those. So that's the first camera that I use. Yeah, I was never into photography just because it's very complicated. Like photography is a whole different beast of its own. Um, I was always more into video, mm -hmm. and that that camera, uh, it shoots really very great video uh, yeah. but it stops at 30 minutes and i'm mm. like okay i can't use this t5i anymore i have to upgrade yeah. so my recent upgrade um was to a 7d mark ii okay um and the differences that that camera can do in video are out of this world yeah i can only imagine just going up and and the price is significant it's probably like double but I can only imagine, you know, going from a two hundred dollar camera to a T one I who at the time was what, seven, six, six, seven hundred bucks. Yeah, something like that. To a a a camera that costs about three grand plus a lens that costs another grand. It, it's it, it's one of those that a lot of people always just want to start from the very top. Yeah. But they have no idea how to use them. You gotta learn no to idea. crawl before you run. Absolutely. Uh, one of the biggest things with uh cameras is that when I was trying to become more legitimate, mm -hmm. I would look at the quality of my pictures and then I would see what people on Instagram or Pinterest or Google images, whatever search I did, I would be like, why do their pictures look like that and mine look like this? Mm -hmm. I always thought I need a better camera. Then I'd get a better camera. My pictures look the same. It's like I just upgraded to a thousand dollar, you know, camera that's that's more an extra thousand dollars. It yeah. still looks the same. What's the deal? Well, when I got that 7D, I realized you have to edit the pictures. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that was like, okay, duh. Yeah. Uh, but then, uh, like like you said, um, you can't start out at the highest um, priced item and then think you're just going to be a professional because yeah. there were things that the 7D taught me so that when I upgraded to the 5D, I knew why the upgrade was necessary. Yeah. Because at some point, I was like, I want to do this, but this 7D doesn't do that. Mm -hmm. So, for example, my YouTube videos now, I shoot in 4K. This yeah. shoots in 4K. The 7D doesn't. There's other things about this, like um, 
the coloring on this. I use what uh, a lot of movie studios, what they do is they will shoot in S log mm -hmm. and this has Canon log. So that flattens the image. So when I'm editing the video, I have complete control of colors, shadows, uh, highlights, brightness, everything with that. Plus with the 4K, my YouTube videos look very professional. Mm -hmm. That's something I would have never gotten with the T1i. Yeah. But had I stuck out with the T1i, as long as I'm producing good content, that's all I would need. But at some point, I wanted to start learning other things. So that's when I started to upgrade. Yeah. So if you're just somebody that's just trying to take great pictures on your Cabo vacation, all you need is like a, a T5i, a T6i. You don't need a big, you know, $5,000, $10,000 camera. Yeah. Uh, you just need something. You can even use your cell phone. Yeah. Oh, yeah. These yeah. these these cell phones nowadays are amazing, amazing monsters of its own. And and I remember when like, just a recent trip that I took to uh, New York, uh, I took my camera. I took the, the T5i with me with my yeah. lens and I'm starting to shoot with it. And uh, even though the quality was good, doesn't mean that the photo was great. Mm -hmm. And then my buddy would bust out his phone and. The phone already has these preset functions that just makes the picture so much better. Yeah. And I'm like, give me a second. I have to change the option here. I have to change the white balance. And something that took him about a couple seconds is yeah. taking me about a minute to figure out where all these settings are. And uh, he's like, dude, your camera sucks. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> give me a second and I'll prove you wrong. Once I figured out all the options and I was like, okay, it's sunny outside. You know, I had to change a couple of things. Mm -hmm. I took the photo and he's like, holy crap. How'd you come up with this? I told you to give me about a minute. I'm trying to figure it out. Yeah. It's not, if, if you don't know what you're doing, it's hard. And I was one of those, I had no idea what I was doing. And he's like, you're carrying like this clunker camera with you. Why? Because it takes good quality photos. Mm -hmm. I can just use my cell phone. Oh, absolutely. You can just use your cell phone. But I want pristine quality pictures that yeah. a cell phone can't produce it just takes longer yeah with that being said how how fast are you now like if you you're on a shoot like a wedding wedding because recently you posted you posted a video about your wedding experience yeah my first how, one your first wedding how was that because wedding is, is is one you can already have like a preset ready to go because you know the lighting yeah but sometimes you might have to go in and out like you have to go outside, then inside, then outside. It's not the same lighting. It's not the same settings. How no. was that? It's a rush because if you miss a moment, you miss it. Mm -hmm. There's no like, hey, can we do that again? There is no that. Uh, if you're doing a shoot with a client for like an hour, you could take your time at a park. Um, you could take your time you know, near a street building or whatever and just create something. A wedding, you have to be on. You have to know uh, s the schedule of what time is the ceremony, what time can you get the, the groom, what time can you get the bride, what time can you get them together. You need to know like who that you need to shoot as far as family members because they want memories of those family members. Mm -hmm. You need to know when the, the when the cake is going to be cut. You need to know all this stuff. And the the thing is that you're in different venues. You're not in a controlled environment. Here, mm -hmm. we're in a controlled environment. You can control the lighting, uh, the temperature of the room. Uh, everything no, we're talking about the temperature of the room it cooled down <laughs> quite a bit yo because uh so before we started sorry remember your thought remember your thought yeah. before we started i'm like yo jerry i'm so sorry this room is hot uh i don't know why and i'm making all these excuses but they're legitimate excuses yo jerry it's gonna be hot because the acoustic panels also these lights are like heating lamps my apologies and i cranked up the air i'm like it's not working loki i'm panicking <laughs> and when i panic i start sweating and if i sweat especially with the uh, with a little if there's glare uh on 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 my on my forehead yo my head looks like a bowling ball it all right it's fine right now uh, yeah because because i wasn't sweating but if i'm sweating i'm like oh god it's gonna be bad it's, i'm just gonna look this shiny ass bowling ball talking on the mic but <laughs> luckily it cooled down because I, I don't know about you but i'm panicking I'm like oh i wanted everything to go perfect but i mean kind of like a photo shoot nothing in life goes perfect it's this is a, a video shoot and so far, it's going pretty well. Don't want to jinx myself. But, um, you know, nothing. I can't control the temperature. No. But you, you shouldn't try to. Yeah. First of all, I'm fine because, look, I'm wearing a sweatshirt. I'm yeah. perfectly fine. The other thing is that's a lot of fun when you can't control something because you don't know what to expect. Uh -huh. And one thing that I've learned over the last year or so, it's like when things go wrong, that's, that's when I'm learning. That's when I'm at my best. And I don't sweat it anymore. A lot of people are afraid of failure. And I welcome it. You learn yeah. so much more from failure than you do from winning. 
you learn so much more from getting chewed out for not turning in an assignment or, or failing a class or, you know, whatever the scenario is. Uh, you learn so much more from that than opposed to getting away with something because mm -hmm. uh, you can't substitute the experience, uh, which is uh, my first wedding, like what we were talking about. I, to I was told by a coworker, hey, my sister is having her wedding tomorrow. Can you shoot it? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. <laughs> okay. I was like, oh, okay. So throughout that day, I was contacting her, fi figuring out uh, pricing, uh, where the venue was, you know, how big the wedding was going to be. And she was just trying to see some of my work. So I sent her some pictures. The next day, I'm sitting in bed around noon. And I'm like, I shouldn't do this. I should just call her and tell her I can't do it. Yeah. The old me would have just stayed at home. Mm -hmm. just, just, oof, wipe my bra, got away with that one. Yeah. That, that, that could have been bad. But the new me was... If I don't do this, I'm missing out on something super valuable. Mm -hmm. I keep saying that I want to be a photographer and that I want to do weddings and stuff. This is it. The universe just dropped something on my lap. And if I don't take advantage of it, yeah. I'm going to regret it. Oh, absolutely. And one of the things is you can't, you can't live with regret. There's that quote that says, what if, you, what if you knew that today you could not fail? What would you accomplish? And I try kind of attacking life like that a lot mm -hmm. lately. And so I was like, you're going to get up. You're going to take whatever little equipment you have. You're going to create something amazing today. And you're just going to go and blitz the heck out of this wedding and do the best job you can do. You know what you do best. Somehow manipulate the situation so you can get the product that you know you can get out. Yeah. And so I showed up. I took a look around the venue. Uh, I met the groom. Then I met the, 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 the bride. Turned out to be one of the best days of my life. Really? They were so nice. Everybody at the wedding treated me like I was part of the family. Um, they were so easy to work with. The experience is something that I would have paid to have uh, gone through. Mm -hmm. um, it was my first actual paid job. Uh, and what's funny is that the months leading up to that shoot, I was going through some... I'm a little bit more spiritual now. So yeah. I was meditating every night about wanting to jumpstart a photography career, like a real photography yeah. career. And before you know it, the entire month of April, I had like maybe six paid jobs yeah. as where I before that had zero all yeah. in the month of May. And I made so much, I made more money that month doing photography than from my real job. <laughs> so what happened was I, I was like, okay, I, I proved it to myself that yeah. I could do photography. If I ever want to jump into it and do a legitimate business, I know I can do it right now. I'm just going to finish my degree, continue working this job that I actually like. Yeah. And I'll jump back into it. And the, the pictures came out great. If people want to see the pictures, I have a video on my YouTube, yeah. um, which we can link some other time. Yeah. Uh, but later that month, I did I literally bookended May with two weddings. My friend Myra's wedding was at the end of May, mm -hmm. which I already knew I was going to do. That was going to be my first like real wedding. Yeah. It turned out to be my second one. And I had so much practice from the first one that that one came out pretty good. Yeah. But it's exhausting. Is it? Yeah. You have to be with them all day running around. You better have it, all your batteries like um, charged. You How many have... batteries did you have on you? Five. <laughs> <laughs> I think I only had to switch out maybe two, three times. But okay, but I you didn't... never know. You got to be you never it's know. better safe than sorry. Yeah, and luckily I had just bought like two 256 gigabyte uh, memory cards, two different ones. So mm -hmm. I had plenty of room. Uh, so all I had to do was just get good composition, get good lighting, and just just shoot my heart out. And pictures came out great. Okay. Yeah. Are you are you a one lens type of guy or are you multiple lenses? Um, I have two lenses, but to be honest, I'm just more of a one. Okay. I, I, the one thing is I'm starting to go away from focusing on gear and just using what I have at my disposal. Mm. I have a 35 millimeter lens, which is um, just a standard portrait lens. Yeah. I have a 50, which is also kind of a, uh, a portrait lens. And then there's two other ones that I want, an 85 and one that's a 70 to 200 millimeter lens, which is the really long ones. Yeah. I think that's all I, I'll ever need. Oh, maybe a wide lens yeah. uh, when I vlog or anything like that. But I'm not worried about um, uh, the actual lenses, camera stuff. All that I need to worry about is capturing moments. One of the things I did the night before was I went on YouTube and I checked out shooting uh, tips for shooting a wedding. And one of the things I learned was um, that you have to constantly be talking to the bride and groom. Mm -hmm. You have to ask questions uh, and you have to just worry about not switching cameras too often. 
and that that's all I did. Um, and I, I actually even made the video that I made with that first wedding. I give tips of what I thought about throughout the day. Uh, it was just such a good experience. Um, so I can't wait for my third wedding, but I feel like I'll be ready for it. So. I love how you, how you, because I, as soon as you said it, I'm like, wow, it went back to your first, your pretty much your first comment. You went on YouTube to learn about how to do the yeah. job the next day. Here's the thing. You never stop learning. Anybody yeah. that says that they know everything, they, they don't. Um, you have to continually ask questions. I used to be scared as a student mm -hmm. to ask questions. I'd, I'd be like, okay, nobody asked a question so we can get out. And so I can figure it out at home, whatever yeah. homework it was, and struggle with it. Now, as an adult, you have to ask so many questions. The more questions you ask, the more you're going to learn. Uh, you mm -hmm. have to lose that fear of asking questions or looking dumb. If there's something I don't know, I'm just going to ask. I don't care if it makes me look like I'm an expert. I don't care if it makes me look like I'm a novice. You have to ask questions because you can't be ignorant to the fact that you know everything and then screw up somehow. Mm -hmm. You have to ask as many questions as possible. So the night before, it's like, I don't know how to shoot weddings. Let me just quickly see what I need. And it wasn't that I needed help shooting a wedding. It's just I was double checking with myself to make sure that I had all my bases covered. Uh, I kind of already knew how the day was going to go, and that's exactly how it went. You know, I just straight up thought about how the day was going to go. I made it manifest, and everything turned out great. Look, thank God. Yeah, thank I cannot, God. I cannot imagine ruining someone's perfect day with horrible pictures. Yeah, by the way, here are your photos. They're all blurry, by the way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and one of the things I want to tell photographers out there, uh -huh. which I don't know if there's photographers out there, but don't be afraid to shoot in auto. There's a lot of things that pro professional photographers say is you have to shoot in manual mm -hmm. so you can control everything. Screw that. Shoot shoot auto. I'd rather have a good uh, uh, picture as opposed to something that's blurry because my shutter speed was too slow. Shutter speed is when you hit the button and mm -hmm. how fast the camera opens and closes. Yeah. Uh, the faster it goes, the less blur. The slower it goes, the more blurry. So I just shoot auto so all that I don't have to think about the technical stuff. If it's a day where I'm shooting someone at the park, I'll shoot auto. I mean manual and take my time. But running gun like that, shoot auto. Okay. And just edit nice pictures. Dang, how long? How long? So from start to finish, the wedding, uh, what time did it start? That wedding wasn't too bad. That started, uh, I think the actual shooting started around 2, 2.30. And then mm -hmm. I didn't leave until 11. Okay, not too bad. Yeah. What about the editing? How long did you, from the time you sat down to the time you're like, all right, this is fully packaged, this is done? Here's the valuable experience I got from that from that shoot is that I didn't have packages, I didn't have pricing, and the way I've always shot pictures is I give people all the pictures that I shot, almost, almost all of them. Mm -hmm. For that wedding, I think I shot close to about a 1,000 pictures. Yeah. And then I manually one by one edited about 700 that took me about two weeks to edit that's a lot if i was a professional photographer and i had another wedding the next day or the next weekend i would have been already backed up with delivering photos for the first wedding yeah and then backed up with the second wedding so one thing i learned is that you have to be very selective with the pictures mm -hmm. you have to ask them questions about you know if you can start setting up a pricing chart for a certain amount of pictures um do that so the next time i do a wedding i'm gonna be fully prepared with that stuff yeah um and that's one of the experiences that you can't learn by watching youtube you just have to go out there and actually feel the experience of asking mm -hmm. the person how many pictures do you want this is the price for this amount of pictures but it's exhausting editing that many pictures mm -hmm. to the point where it becomes work. And the last thing I want is for some something that's my passion that I do as a hobby to become work to the point where I avoid it. Yeah. I don't want that passion to ever die. So I have to be very smart with the way I structure shoots, the way I structure pricing, the way I structure packages, basically. Mm -hmm. And it's one of those things that you don't think about. But once you're at actually doing it, you learn through your mistakes. My mistake was... I was trying to give them as many pictures and I didn't mind because I didn't have other jobs, but if I did have other jobs, that's something I would have incorporated into yeah. that. Uh, so you learn as you go with anything new, you, you learn what to do, what not to do. And that's, I think that's the best part about learning is you just go into something blind yeah. and you discover a whole new process of doing things in a whole nother world. That's why I like to look at people when I'm out and about and I look at their job. It's like, what, what did they, what must they do all day in this job? Like, what did they learn? And I just think about that stuff. I'm a deep thinker. I'm a, so, I'm a sociologist. I like to look at people and just think. Oh, okay. So. Well, I like to look at people and judge them. <laughs> judge them? <laughs> Depends on what they're saying or what they're doing, sure. <laughs> that's, that's one of my favorite things 
I know I try to do like people watching is one of my favorite things to do, especially um, like when there's a lot of drunk people. Those are oh, always my favorite. Yeah. Always my favorite. Uh, like downtown Vegas. Um, oh, God. That is a very well-known area for drunk people. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so you you went into photography. You're doing these weddings, and then you're asking, you're, you know, you're giving prices. How did you set up those prices? Did you base it off someone else's, off YouTube? Um, or did you ask other people, pretend that you wanted something, and they gave you their prices? Um, I thought about that strategy about asking uh, – actual photographers with real real websites about mm -hmm. how much for a shoot like this just to get an idea i thought about that but to be honest i didn't do that i just mm -hmm. went on on youtube again mm -hmm. and i checked um some of the photographers that i follow and i checked um if they had a video about the pricing and most of them mm -hmm. kind of did some of them were vague some of them were very useful but at the end of the day i felt comfortable setting my own prices for the level of photographer that i am and for the amount of pictures so i just for example, one shoot I did with a family, I think I only asked for like maybe 100, 150, something like that. They ended up giving me 300 as a tip. So all to total. And I was very surprised by that. Mm. Um, so I, I feel that um, you shouldn't be ashamed of charging a certain price for the work that you do as an artist. And I see this a lot from makeup artists or from hairstylists that say, I charge this much. People always ask for a discount. You know, it takes a lot of talent or, you know, work to get to this level. And I shouldn't be adjusting my prices based on people's budgets. Yeah. You just have to accept the fact that this is the price you're going to do. And if people fight you on it and you lose clients, that's it. They don't yeah. understand the work that goes behind it. You have to be able to put your foot down and just charge a certain amount. So uh, my prices have kind of varied depending on how busy I am with my real life as far as school and work. Yeah. And if I have downtime, I might be more lenient on, on prices. But to be honest, uh, one of my friends just asked me for a shoot for a uh, for his car. He, he has this uh, Ford Mustang that he wants to do a shoot with. I said, I'll do it for free. I'm not doing anything right now. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not going to charge people, especially during this time when people are worrying about their own finances. I'm not going to charge people right now. Yeah. And uh, nobody's hit me up, but um, he's um, I trust him to do a shoot with him. So yeah. um, I'm not going to charge him. You know, because yeah. right now I'm not trying to go 100% on my photography business, so I'm just going to not charge. But if I were to charge, I don't know, maybe like 100, 150. Yeah. I always say like maybe 50 or $75 for the actual shoot, 50, $75 for the editing. Yeah. The editing is the hard part because you're in a room. It's time consuming. Looking, time consuming, looking through pictures, adjusting brightness and colors. The shoot is fun. You know, oh, yeah. You have a blast. You socialize. You talk with them. You have fun. You laugh. That. It's it's like a football player. You don't mm -hmm. get paid for the Sunday games. You get paid for the practice week. Yeah, because that's the hard part. So that that's how I view it. Um, so I just kind of split it, uh, and it depends on what it is. If it's one person, multiple people, certain location, it, it just varies. Okay, there's a lot of there's there's a lot of factors that go into this. That, no, that's incredible that you mentioned that. Just because I just to create this, you know, I wanted. Um, marketing like marketing mm -hmm. needed to be on point and and i failed more on the outreach of marketing because i focused so much on the branding that was my biggest thing i was like i'm trying to brand not me but the actual product so right i'm like how am i gonna do this so i hit up a couple people um that i knew good friends of mine and and i asked hey i want to you know i want a logo mm -hmm. and i made it very clear like hey i want this logo what are your prices oh don't worry about it buddy no, no, I am going to worry about it because <laughs> one, you're, and you're I so always, nice. <laughs> uh, one, cause I just know that at the end of the day, you're putting so much time and time is money. Money is time. That's always yeah. been my biggest thing. So when they, when they told me, Hey, you know, like, don't worry about it. I said, no, no, what is your prices? And I'm going to pay you. And I paid them and they did an incredible job, but also because I knew I paid them, um, I was kind of picky. I don't like that. I don't like that. Can we change this? And mm -hmm. everything was through email. So was, even communication was even difficult. Uh, can we change that? Can we change that? I don't like the coloring. Can we add more? Yeah. And it was just back and forth. Then I was like, okay, I got the logo. Cool. And I'm figuring out how to market myself. And all these platforms, all these social yeah. media websites have different dimension sizes. And I'm like, oh, you got to be kidding me. Yeah. And I have Photoshop. I was like, I can do this. This is super easy. I'm doing it. I'm like, okay, I know how to resize it. How the hell am I going to center it? 
you know, mm -hmm. and then the, I had a square <laughs> photo. And even if I wanted to resize it, you can see obvious lines. Yeah. Uh, when I resized it, I'm like, I, okay, I'm dumb. I have no idea how to use this. So I hit him up again. Hey, you know, I just want resize, you know, photos in certain sizes. And he's like, oh, I can do that for you. That's easy. Again, how much? Dude, you already paid me. And that's super easy. It might be easy, but I bet you it's time consuming or tedious. And he's like, uh, not really. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Well, who is this uh, guy? <laughs> need to hit him up. So, uh, so I was like, cool. Well, you're not gonna give me a price, uh, except anything that I give you. Don't send it back, cause you know he doesn't live here. Yeah. And I paid him, and you know, incredible work, because I didn't know that every platform has a different dimension sizes. You know, Facebook. There's the Facebook photo, which typically you can post anything, you mm -hmm. know, as far as, but it ends up being squared. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, all the all the all the pro profile pictures will be squared. So I asked, uh, you know, for what is it? 1080 by 1080 yeah. square. Very obvious. But then Facebook has a specific dimension size for a banner. I asked for that one. Yeah. And I looked up what, what the dimension size is. Then I, and then I went on to Twitter. They have a specific dimension size for their banner. Yeah. Okay. Then I went into Instagram and I'm like, oh, okay, what can I do with this? And I'm like, oh, I can use stories. And because you can just put your logo in the stories, but I wanted the whole Every, yeah. the whole screen to be taken up. I was like, okay, I don't know the dimension sizes, but I know the ratio. The ratio is 16 by 9 or 16. Yeah, yeah. no, that's yeah. correct. Yeah, 16 by 9. Um, and he said, okay. Uh, and I told him I don't really. So if it's 16 by 9, probably like like an HD video type of thing. Yeah. So he made me that. And then also the, the, the title card for the podcast. I wanted in 1080p mm -hmm. and it was that and I'm like, holy crap, I'm up to like eight different dimension sizes. And I was like, this is for the video. This is for landscape. This is for portrait. This is for Instagram. Um, because you're able to post a, a photo uh, landscape, but it, there's certain dimensions that it maximizes. Then it crops on the sides. Yeah. Then there's certain dimension sizes that you're able to put portrait and then if you do it above that, it crops in the top and bottom. So just yeah. so I can maximize everything, I want these. Uh, dude, it took me forever to find these. Just dimension sizes. And he's like, dude, that's super easy. Don't worry about it. I got it. Do it within a day. They were done. I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> you oh, have everything. I, I was like, okay, I wasn't ready for this. And, you know, the podcast is coming out, the first episode. So I'm adding everything to it. Um, and it, the little things. Then I needed a watermark. YouTube requ uh, doesn't require, but YouTube wanted a watermark yeah. that I can add to the corner of every mm -hmm. video without me having to put it in the video. I'm like, oh, stupid YouTube. How come you didn't tell me? You know, yeah. text me. No, I'm joking. <laughs> um, so I, I asked for that. Then the biggest one. Uh, and then I go back to like your, your story about editing. It's so time consuming. And I can only imagine for those that, that, that know how to do it. It probably is a little bit easier. Yeah. doesn't mean that it's not time consuming. It's that, time consuming. Yeah. I, I've done that for all my social media platforms. Uh, and the thing is that when you're doing it for yourself, it's a lot of fun because you get to change things. You pick colors. Mm -hmm. so it's like, what picture do I use for my profile picture? And then going on photoshop you can resize and do all this stuff it's very time consuming before you know it you've spent three hours on it on just like one thing for like a youtube banner uh on, on your channel yeah um and the thing is that it, it isn't that hard but like when, once you figure it out the next time you do it it does go by a lot faster so I, yeah. I understand what he was saying by it's quick but the process of learning how to do that you should be getting compensated for doing that for someone else yeah so it's very nice of you that you paid him to do it and it's very nice of him to not want to charge you after mm -hmm. you'd already paid him but it's very time consuming but that's the thing what i like about uh kind of branding and you know kind of putting stuff all over like twitter and facebook and instagram and all that stuff is that it's fun you, it because you're creating the whole time yeah and i wish that was my job and i could have easily gone into you know graphic design and done all that stuff but um, I just like to do it as a hobby. Yeah. Uh, and it's so much fun. And yeah, it's just like anything else. If you love doing something before you know it, it's been an hour, two hours. Yeah. Time flies. Yeah. So with, with, with that being said, there is there, um, what is your, your, your biggest in the beginning, what was like the biggest failure that you, that you were 
upset about because obviously failure is not one of the yes i failed i'm so happy yeah no, there's gonna be there's, you're gonna be upset what was the biggest failure because remember i i do know that this is it's a passion yeah you know, it's a passion for you but at the same time you want to perfect your passion yeah what was the the first time you're like fuck man i put a lot of effort into this photo shoot and over half the photos are blurred or did, did that ever happen to you um I don't know if it happened on an actual shoot because by the time I actually started doing real shoots, I, I think I've already had a couple of those failures on yeah. my own. Um, I think I think it, w- it would have gone like when I first got that first Canon camera, that, that the T1i. Mm-hmm. All my pictures going back were like really orange. <laughs> like really orange. It's like, why are they so orange? It's the white balance. And it's the white balance. Yeah. Uh, the white balance was like, I, I can't even remember what it was on, but it was just the temperature, the Kelvin was set too high. So I tried editing the, you know, cooling it down, but it would just turn the whole picture blue. Mm-hmm. And I think it's just learning with, you know, pictures and trying to make them look like super professional and just not fail, not, not succeeding. Yeah. And then once I figured one thing out, why is it so dark? Then I, figure it out and then little by little like i had a bunch of little failures that led me to good successes to the point where i felt like i was comfortable to shoot pictures for a wedding yeah and even that first wedding there was a lot of pictures that were a little bit blurry and you know kind of like um going back and thinking about the the pictures i shot it's like oh had i done this this would have been better and just just nitpicking things that you did in that shoot and then improving them for the next one once I had that second wedding, there was a lot of things that I already knew not, not to do, mm-hmm. um, like uh, not forgetting to shoot the guests. That, oh, that's something yeah. I s- kind of did forget in that in that first one. So second wedding, I learned to do that. Little things like that. So the failures weren't massive to the point where it's like I just embarrassed myself. Yeah. This was this was horrible. Um, I I can never face these people again. But it was just little failures that I don't think they noticed uh, that I was able to improve and incorporate into the next wedding. Uh-huh. And you you just learn like that. You know, you do one little thing that you, you know, like sometimes I have these projects in my head. Mm-hmm. And it's like today I'm going to do this. Would not work. And then for some reason over the years, I magically know how to do it. Yeah. It's like, when did I learn how to do this? So, for example, my YouTube videos, they used to be so grainy and pixelized. And it's like, why? I'm I'm shooting in HD. Why aren't they processing in HD and going on to YouTube in HD? Why do they look like this? I don't know what it was back then. Maybe it was the software I was shooting, but whatever it is now, they come out crispy clean and Mm -hmm. they're super perfect. That's like, this just magically happened overnight, but it didn't. I had so many little failures in the past that over time, I just kind of learned how to do it properly. Yeah. But I've never had like one big failure. I don't think. Do you have any, any, well, let's be honest. We all have inspirations or people that we look up to or people that kind of inspire us. Are, are, Are there, do you have anybody because I know you're 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 into two things that, so far that we've discussed, um, fitness yeah. and and photography or videography. But I think yours your niche is more more photography. Do you have anybody who you follow, um, and you take advice from, or not just copy, um, but like uh, are influenced by? And you're like, I want to do it like them, but not necessarily exactly like them. For like for example, with me with podcasting i love podcasting i love listening to it which is so strange that we're we're literally going back to like the 70s and 80s and maybe 60s like, yeah, to like talk, talk show radio talk show radio i would have never thought that that we would go back into into time and listen to talk talk uh talk radio you know radio uh, just talking you know because at one point wasn't there they read and I, I i should know this but i i i hope you remember uh, something about our history classes. Uh, there was, I think it was like World War of the World or something like that. They read a book mm-hmm. on the radio. Oh yeah, and people thought it was real. And people thought it was real. That bombings the world was ending. Yes, and there's a bunch of bombings and everything's going on. I'm like, yo, we're going back to that because there's a podcast that literally they read books. That's what the podcast is about. I'm like, we'll just get the audio book. No, because as they're talking, you know, as they're reading, yeah. They add their own their own twist to it. The theater of the mind, I think. Yeah. Or something like that. Yeah. So mine so mine influence when it comes to podcasting, because I have a ton. So but to keep it just short, when it comes to podcasting, I'm like, okay, who do I like? Who who has a good message or who has a good product that I want to either not replicate, but create my own, but having having them as as the foundation, you mm-hmm. know? Yeah. 
and I and I listen to a few, and some of my favorite ones are two. It's called Genius Brain with De- uh, with David So, mm-hmm. and uh, the No Chaser podcast mm-hmm. with Timothy Chantu Ansu. Chantu Ansu. Yeah, Ch- uh, or what did he say? Uh, change the wrong song. Change the wrong. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I didn't hear that. Him say yeah, that, so because he he used to go by Timothy, formerly known as De La Ghetto, De La Ghetto. Uh, but he he changed his name to his actual real name mm-hmm. uh, to honor his dad. Yeah, but. Uh, so Legacy. I listen to them and I'm like, okay, I like the way they talk and they talk a lot about good things, but they talk about, they keep their branding. Timothy is more of the raunchy jokes, mm-hmm. sexual jokes, but that's yeah. his branding. Then there's David So, which is like all raw, no scripts, no, in, maybe, maybe a little bit of PC, but it was like off the top of the dome, yeah. what I think and my true intentions. I was like, okay, I like both of those, but that's not who I am. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I do say a couple like inappropriate sexual jokes, but that's not all I do. I do like to speak my own opinion, but I do care about the feelings of others. Yeah. And I'm like, how can I, how can I make this my own? You know what? Um, I like to motivate people through yeah. my stories. What about instead of talking about my stories, I talk about other people's stories and and it just became a little thought. And so I, I based it off those two, you know, yeah. kind of combined them, made my own. Then when it came to branding, I have no idea how some podcasts are branded, um, but they work. But the one that I love the most was the Genius Brain podcast, the way he brands, the way um even what is in the bio, you know, I kind of copy and paste and I changed a couple words because I thought it was really good. Yeah. Um, and that, I mean, that's my biggest influence when it comes to the podcast world, uh, those two, but mostly branding and product wise. My favorite is the genius pay the I keep combining them. The genius <laughs> brain podcast with David. So that's mine. What about you? Uh, well, first of all, on on the whole podcast thing, mm-hmm. I I started listening to podcasts in two thousand nine. Randy Orton, the wrestler, yeah. was on a podcast and he was talking about things backstage, mm-hmm. about his personal life. It's like, whoa, what is this? I just yeah. felt like it was like a, you know, like a voyeuristic look into their lives. And then you had Chris Jericho and Stone Cold Steve Austin start their podcast, and they're talking about all these things of you know memories and and matches that relates to when I started watching wrestling, and I just definitely fell in love with like podcast mm-hmm. and some of my favorite ones are the shack podcast the big podcast with shaquille o'neal mm-hmm. uh chris jericho's podcast stone cold's podcast um david dobrik jason nash's podcast um so i love podcasts in general because you're just listening to people talk and you get to dr- fly on the wall you get to listen to what they're talking about yeah. and then you you know especially if it's an athlete or or a movie star you you learn all these things that you would have never learned it's like you're listening to a phone call between two two friends you know yeah um, as far as for my role models and people that I look up to in the photography world, uh, when I started to kind of try to pick up YouTube again, it mm. was thanks to Casey Neistat and Jesse Wellens. It was like a whole nother generation of YouTubers uh, when vlogging was really taking off again, uh, as opposed to when Timothy Delgado or Super Ego or Just Kidding Films, that, that generation when I started watching it, yeah. thanks to you, was I kind of went into the more creative side with yeah. Jesse Wellens and Casey Neistat. And then when, then, then when I w- went from them, I kind of veered into the more photography side as opposed to videography. Yeah. So there's people like Peter McKinnon is huge. Evan Ramped, uh, based out of Atlanta, is is one that I think should be blowing up, but it just isn't. He's just mm-hmm. stead, steadily growing, but he's getting there. Another one is Will, uh, William uh, Verbeck. He shoots in medium format film not even like digital Mm -hmm. and he's got a big following because he has an aesthetic that is very nostalgic because he still shoots in film um his whole style his whole vibe is really good so um you also have jessica uh, i can't say her last name kobesi Mm -hmm. i think she's she's from canada or she lives in california i can't remember but she's really cool because you could tell that she's just a normal person and she's a legit photographer and her youtube channel isn't huge but she is very, very well known. She has many subscribers. So um, you kind of get to know some of these people. Uh, Chris Howe is another one. Um, so there, there's a couple that I, I like to nitpick from all of them because mm-hmm. I don't like to have just one niche. I, I don't understand how people can like have one niche and just do that and have that as their brand. I'm mm-hmm. too ADD. I like to pick it. One day I might I might want to do something that's very sentimental. Yeah. 
low colors, um, desaturated, cool tones. The other, I might do something that's very popping and colorful with warm tones. It, I'm just all over the place. I like to express myself in different ways. So I don't want to say I have one niche. So I just nitpick from all of them and whatever I'm feeling that day, I'll, I'll kind of log into their mindset or I'll take inspo from whatever their pictures are. Because mm -hmm. I, I can't just have one one style and just call it a day. So if you look at my Instagram grid, one picture might be black and white, the other one might be grainy, the other one might be super like futuristic looking with nice lights and neon lights and colorful and it, it just varies. Yeah. Whatever I'm in the mood for, that that's what I go for. But those are the people on YouTube. It's usually YouTubers. Yeah. So it's usually YouTubers that I look at as uh, my inspiration and I've learned from all of them. That's why I, I I see them as inspirations because I've watched their channels, I've watched their videos, and they've been my mentors, they've been my teachers without them knowing it. Mm -hmm. And I'll always have big, give mad props to YouTube because anybody in the world who doesn't know how to do something and doesn't go out and seek that knowledge will always frustrate me. If you yeah. don't know something, you don't know how to spell something, you don't know how to cook something, you don't know how to take good pictures, Google's right there. Yeah. Google it. And if you want a video tutorial, go to YouTube. There's somebody out there that's doing it. Yeah. You have no idea how many videos I've seen on my, my old car now mm -hmm. uh, where I didn't know how to change the headlights. I didn't know I had to remove the whole front bumper. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> is that a Chevy? It's a Chevy. Bro, that, <laughs> it's something about Chevys that I don't you know. have to remove the entire bumper. It's like no wonder I couldn't get to the light bulb. So yeah. if I don't know a rest, I like, for example, I was following a recipe from um, – Joshua, what's his name? Damn it, I forgot. Uh, he's a he's a cooking mm -hmm. uh, chef uh, YouTuber. Jo I forgot his last name, but Joshua. He, he I was doing Nashville hot chicken, and I was like, I don't have a thermometer to check the internal of the chicken or the oil. So mm -hmm. I was like, how do I check if um my water is at a certain temperature? And they, I I learned on Google and uh, some other YouTubers like throw a breadcrumb in there or put the spoon if it starts to bubble. You know you're at a certain temperature. It's like okay, yeah. perfect. You just got to go out there and seek the yeah. information. It's out there. We have the internet. This is the best time to live right now. Oh, especially right now. I mean, a lot of people don't have much to do. Yeah. It's trying to, you know, learn a new hobby. Do 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 something new. Um, but it's also trial and error. And, yeah. uh, you know, to, to, to kind of end it on, on a good note. And especially because, you know, we, it seems like we talk about our passions and, and but we always get bring it back. But right now I'm not doing it. But because yeah. of covid we're not doing it i think uh and hopefully you can agree with me is is uh keeping a norm i think that's the most important thing just because you're at home doesn't mean that you should um not do anything you know yeah. still keep that norm um if you're working at home that's tough and and i say this from experience just because when i go home at home i'm supposed to what go to bed and relax and chill yeah when I go to work, I go to an office and that's yeah. I'm in work mode. But now that I have to work from home, I had to realize, OK, I have to keep a norm because the first few like the first few days and even that first week. Yeah, I'm like, oh, this is the life I get to work <laughs> from home. I'm working in my pajamas. I'm vibing. I gained eight pounds in one week because I was eating all the quarantine snacks. Mm. I was lazy. I did not work out um, and I just forgot my norm. Yeah. And I woke up right when work was when I needed to log in at eight. That's not who I am. So I kind of I was like, you know what? This is unacceptable. We have to keep a norm. So I still wake up at six, do my morning cardio, uh, at least get into work mode, even though let's say your your office is in, in your in your bedroom. Get into work mode by changing your clothes just by changing yeah. your clothes. You're like, oh. Crap, I go to, you know, like I got to go to work now, you know, yeah. <laughs> uh, but if you're in your pajamas, you're like, man, I can just chill, not do anything. Even like, let's say you're responding to an email, you're chill about it. Yeah. But as soon as you change into like, you know, if you wore jeans or if you wore slacks and a polo, like, even the way you write, you're writing, you got to do what you got to do. You're answering in such a professional way. And, and I've come to realize that people have lost their norm because we're going to go back to a normal schedule. Yeah. We don't know when, but we will go back soon, hopefully very soon. But we have to keep a norm because it's going to be very hard to transition to re back to what our norm was. Because if our norm now is waking up right on, you know, right at eight and not doing anything, yo, when it gets back into reality, yeah, it's going to be really hard. I don't, I don't know if it's it's been really hard for you to to keep a norm or if you've just been kicking back. 
I'm having the time of my life mm-hmm. because I have, you know, I don't know why some, I know why some people are complaining. They have families to provide for, they have mortgages, they have rent, whatever mm-hmm. it is. But for me, I've dreamed of scenarios where it's like, what if I could just have a whole week or a whole month to just create stuff? Mm-hmm. And here it is. The thing is that I was also going down that dark path of snacking on quor- all my quarantine snacks and like being lazy and just wasting an entire day not doing anything. So um, one of the things I did was like, like I said, focus on making one TikTok a day and that takes up a lot of time actually. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I'm also doing um, the 75 hard challenge with my roommates, Melissa and Ryan, mm-hmm. which is drink a gallon of water every day do two workouts, two 45 minute workouts, one indoors, one outdoors, um, read 10 pages a day and take a progress picture. And that is having a schedule of like, make a TikTok either in the morning or at night. And then in the middle, do your workout reg- regimen and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, and it's kind of like, it's giving me something to do. Like, Oh, I don't want to do this workout. So it's like, Oh, I don't want to go to work, but I got to. So that's kind of substituted my regular workflow. Uh, and that's just now working out, uh, working out, watching what I'm eating, giving me some sort of structure so I don't lose my mind during quarantine. But mm-hmm. anytime I'm not working out, I'm, I'm doing a, a project or I'm taking some leisure time, watching a movie, playing Call of Duty or Madden or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. So I still have some sort of structure. Okay. Yeah. So I'm, I'm perfectly fine. Oh. Once we do go back to normal though, like it's, it is going to, even for me, it's going to be hard to kind of pick right back up. Yeah. I, I don't know how we're going to do it, but I'm sure, I'm sure we'll be fine. You know what? You know what? We'll, we'll make you do it. A paycheck. A paycheck. Be, yeah. <laughs> a pay, oh, are you paying me? All right. Yo, let's wake up at six <laughs> o'clock to get to work at eight. Yeah. Um, no, oh, that's awesome though. Well, uh, I think, uh, we're, we're going to leave it on that note. Yo, man, cause we, let's be honest, man, you and I, we go way, you know, we, we go, uh, way back. So we, I mean, we can talk for, for a few hours. There's like so much we didn't talk about. I know. And we kind of, <laughs> we're going to talk about this. We're going to talk about that. And I'm looking at the clock. I'm like, holy shit. We went a little bit past one hour, but I'm not going to stop a conversation if it's nice and juicy or if it's good, you know, yeah. whether the, the fact of the matter is, it's like you said, if you have good contact, people are going to listen to it. You know, yeah. I know people that are listening to it on the on the podcast. Like, holy shit, he went past an hour. I can't listen to more an hour because no, no. if it's good, people are like, yeah. oh, well, it's a little bit past the hour, and it's really good. I'm going to still keep listening. Um, but that's awesome, bro. I, I do want to thank you for coming on the podcast and, and coming into the studio. I think that's the most important thing for me. is is Because like I said in the beginning, I interviewed you. Do you talk to people? Who have you hung out? Do you go out? No. Yeah. All right. You're safe. Come through. You know, because I, I, I like to be very safe, too. I don't go out. Actually, my dad goes out way more than I do. He goes grocery shopping. I was like, Oh yeah, uh, and I'm I'm like okay, right, Daddy. Well, if you want to go, but um, you know, uh, I, I'm not I'm not into that. But it's the only times I go out is if I have to go get food. Yeah, no, absolutely. But is there anything you want to plug in? Share. Uh, follow my Instagram, TikTok, Twitter. They're all the same at Jerry Revolution. Uh, you can go to YouTube. Actually, uh, if you go to my Instagram, I'll have the link for my YouTube channel there. You guys mm-hmm. can check that out. Um, but other than that, I can't wait to come back. I'm I, first of all, I'm very honored that you had me here. Uh-huh. Uh, to be the first in-studio guest. Yes. Uh, and this is a, a little bit of a dream come true because I've been wanting to do my own podcast, but uh-huh. I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. So if I can come as a guest on somebody else's, this was legit. This was so much fun. I, I can't wait for a future guest. Absolutely. Uh, so thank you so much for having me. Absolutely, man. Thank you. And I'll make sure to uh, put it, put the links down below. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, I want to thank everybody uh, for listening to the Real Spicy podcast. You can listen to us on Apple uh, Spotify and Google, and you can. Uh, I've been trying to practice this. If you wanna watch with your eyes, with you what you listen with your ears, you can check us out on YouTube. Make sure you give us a like and comment down below what you think. If you have any thoughts, uh, again, thank you so much for listening and watching. And on that, I'm out.